amazing what you guys, you know, you still have a passion for, for our own, you know, That's Los Angeles right. Rams. Right. Yeah. And I appreciate that. And family. you! And I will pass this on. I will pass this on to John. Yeah. To, the, to the folks who may have some, uh, some power in, in, in what's going to happen in the future. For those of you, yeah, come on up real quick. This is the president of Rap Central North County, Bruce Cole. He's going to say a few words. We're going to, after we're done, we're going to go to the next room. You guys can go over there. We're going to say, you know, say a few things, ask him some questions from his playing days, and we'll spend a couple minutes and we'll have a good time. Here we go. All right, first of all, thank you, uh, Ralph, for inviting me. You treated me like a king, and it's been a blessing on my birthday to meet the great Jack Young right here. Obviously, the greatest defensive ends in NFL history. That's right. You know what? I had season tickets for the LA Rams from 1984 to 1994. Yeah, go. We got to see Jack Young, but some great sacks, some great tackles. But my most memorable moment of Jack Youngblood that I'll never forget. Broken legs. Was, that was a good one. But it wasn't the broken leg. It wasn't the sack. It wasn't the tackles. Thinking Jones. You know what it was? Jones. It was his Hall of Fame introduction speech. Yeah. And he turned around and looked at him, and he said, Vince Swan, and he said, and you know we should have won that game. Yeah. That's the most memorable moment of Jack Youngblood ever. And to me, that was the greatest sack of all time. So, to Ram Central, to SoCal, to Central Valley, to all, bring back LA Rams to all of Southern California. We love Jack Youngblood. I want to give you a hug, brother. That was my most memorable moment of Jack Youngblood right there. Ah, Lim Swan ate that one, didn't he? <laughs> think when you come from Florida and you see people still love the Los Angeles Rams and they love you? Well, there was no question in my mind that you're going to always have, have a contingency here that, that loved us. You know, we, we, we established that back in the day and I don't think that's going, that's going away. I mean, the, the, the young people then are now you know, middle-aged middle -aged folks today and they still got the same passion. When we were a good football team here in, here in Southern California, they loved us. I mean, they, they made us rock stars. And I think that's the, you know, the same thought process is, is still going on. Well, I, I was part of that generation. The first game I ever went to was in 1973. Uh, Fred Dreyer got two safeties against the Packers. Right. And uh, what was it like for you guys back then? Because it's, it's nothing like it is now. It, it's, it's hard to get to some of these players, and they don't even want to talk to anybody. But you guys were like part of the family back then. Well, we... Uh, we approach the, the, the public a little bit different than than, uh, than current uh, We didn't we didn't we didn't look at it as though it was uh, it, it was an obligation. We we thought it was a, it was a responsibility that uh, our fans are, are are part of the whole picture, and we appreciate that. And. Talk about how people say that LA can't support a team. That's that's got to be ridiculous when it, when you hear stuff like that. Well, they, they they weren't here in the good days. Then. They don't understand. If, if people say that, they they have no idea what they're talking about. Because <clears throat> when you have a good football team or, or a good sports team here in Los Angeles, they follow you. They they turn you into rock stars. What was it like for you walking out of that tunnel in the Coliseum? That was a great moment. I mean, it was all it always was. You know, Sundays were, were, were the time for us to go and perform. That was, that was what we, we worked for, you know, 365 days a year, is to, is to go to that tunnel and, and be introduced and, and run out on that field. I loved it. What was it, what was it like for you when, you when you found out that Georgia was taking the Rams to St. Louis? That, 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 that got to have broken your heart a bit. Well, you know, I, there's, there's two, things, two ways to look at that. You know, I was, I was out of the game. I was in I was in management. Um, 
I was I had, I had been away from from Southern California. I was in Sacramento at the point in time, and I, I saw it two ways: one from an emotional standpoint, and then one from a you know logistical, logical standpoint. Um, you know, it was, it was about it was about money. Uh, there was no question about that, and um, you, I understood that. I might not have liked it, you know, because because you know that that, that left us in a limbo, basically. I talked to Eric Dickerson last week and I asked him about uh, you guys like you, Merlin never had a chance to be honored, you know, anywhere in, in Los Angeles. Does, does that, what do you feel about that? Where you, where you can't go anywhere on a Sunday afternoon and they can't put you in a ring of honor right now anywhere in LA? Well, there's nothing to put us in the ring of honor for. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing here. Uh, you know, and, and, the, and the franchise doesn't have that much of connection to Los Angeles City. Right. They 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 are focused on St. Louis. Right. And I, I totally understand that from a management perspective. So, uh, you know, whether we're recognized or not is irrelevant. Right. Basically. Well, just in general, even if there was another team here, I mean, you guys, I, there was such a great history that you it doesn't. But if there's another team here, why would they why would they want to honor us? Right. Because we're not part of their team. Right. I mean, they may have the same you know city name. But they're not, they're not the same franchise. Well, in the same instant, what about Rams guys from your era that are being honored in St. Louis? Well, they, sh they should yeah. honor us. They, they just got a different name. Yeah. They're still the Ram organization. Right. The organization is the issue, right. not the city. Sure. Not the city. That's, that's why you know, Cleveland was smart. They kept the Browns. Yeah. And how, how would you like the Rams to be back, or just another NFL team be in LA? I mean, that's, you're part of the history, so it's got to we got to get that history going. Well, there's two two ways to think about that. If the Rams move again, if they, if they make another move and come back in this direction, which I have no idea where there's any possibility of that, uh, that would be that would be nice. I'd like to see that, of course. Uh, you know, from from a personal perspective. In all reality, if we're going to if we're going to do if, if the league is going to do something, they're going to do something for the for the for the entire league, not just for an individual franchise. Sure. So the best thing to do there, in my opinion, uh, <coughs> would be put a uh, exp expansion franchising. Okay. And your book um, on Sundays, talk about that and, and and what it means to you. Well, we uh, we, we we wrote the book because it was Sunday and it. Uh, Tells some pretty good stories about the playing days, starting from you know from, from young from from my, my childhood all the way through you know playing for the Rams. One last question: your your greatest memory is a Los Angeles Ram in Los Angeles, obviously. Well, one of the, one of the great memories, and there, there's thousands of them. One of the one, one of the great memories are standing next to next to Larry Brooks in in Pasadena. Uh, Sunday night, Sunday afternoon, sun's going down, and of course we're we wound up like like an eight day clock, and uh, and we, we we step out of the tunnel, coming from our dressing room, and we look out across, and it's it's two hours, hour and a half before the game, and the sun is is setting just right, and there's a there's a a glow over the over that arena there. And they have they had micro uh, flashcards yeah. back then, and they there was a there was a surreal look at this thing. It was almost had it had an aura to it. And I'm standing there, and Brooks and I are looking at each other, and going, "Ooh, <laughs> what are we? What what are we about to go into here?" I mean, it was something that was almost uh, you know I. Out of world. If, if Cromwell makes the interception, we win the ball. Yes, I was at that game. Thank you so much. I've got one more question. Oh. What would it mean to you, the city of uh, Southern California, and the fans if the Rams came back? What do you think it would mean to you and the city and the fans? Well, if the, if the if the franchise if the franchise came back, then we would then we would have a home. Uh, as as the majority of us think today and, and, and feel and, and have have experienced, we we really don't have a franchise anymore. We're kind of in limbo. I mean, they have 
quote unquote, trying to make a uh, an outreach to the to the Los Angeles Ram. Those players, you know, pre-'95. But in all reality, they know for a fact that they have. 